there are only two ways that we know of to get to the top of this beautiful mountain that rests peacefully in the Squaw Valley. One is the aerial tram, but the much more fun and exciting way is Tahoe Zone via Ferrata. As soon as we walked in the home base, we were greeted by tons of cool climbing gear and our guides, Evan and Witt. You may be wondering, what is Via Ferrata? The term Via Ferrata is actually Italian. It loosely translates to Iron Road, which signifies the metal cable that you'll be hooked to as you climb the mountain. So one of those risks is going to be a slip and fall. Um, the harness is there to prevent any loss of limb or life, but it will be uncomfortable. After a short orientation and a quick round of introductions, we harnessed up and started our little adventurers parade across the shopping center to our ride, which is affectionately named The Beast. After we were all locked and loaded, The Beast came alive with a mighty roar, and we began our roughly 10 minute ride up the mountain to the beginning of the Via Ferrata. There is a bit of a hike before and after the Via Ferrata, but that's totally cool. You're in a beautiful area and it gives you a chance to talk to the guides and the other climbers. So that puts you on the course here. The good news is those steel plates fit through the opening, but this cable doesn't fit. So once you come onto the Via at the beginning of the course, you're attached. The only way to come off is to either get to the top of the cables. So you'll see up there, there'll be another little plate that you can come off. Or in the event of some sort of unforeseen circumstance, Evan and I got keys, we can unlock it here. It was at this point that they asked who wanted to volunteer to go first. I saw this little blur go flying by me. It was V. You could not stop her from getting on. I had to jump on after her because someone's got to get the shot, right? first climb is just a nice short one just to get your feet wet before you unhook and take a small hike over to the next section. The specialized clips that you have to run your carabiner over can be just a little bit tricky at first. It took our entire group a couple of tries to get it the first couple of times because it only goes over in one direction. It was time for our first monkey bridge. This was a good intro because it was only a couple of feet off the ground. When we got to the tougher, more vertical sections of the route, it was awesome to see the amount of time and detail that the course designers put into the route there was always a hand or a foothold right where you needed it to be. Even though it may appear that we are perilously hanging off the edge of a cliff, this route is so overly engineered. Each bolt into the rock can support over 4,000 pounds. It's definitely a nice peace of mind knowing that even if you were to fall, you're not gonna fall very far. Tahoe's Via Ferrata has two separate routes. Our group took a vote and we ended up picking the Sundial Arete. This has great shaded areas, totally exposed cliffs, and a great chance to wave at the tram as it goes by. After this fun little traverse, we hit a couple sections that had us gaining altitude really fast. It was really cool watching the beautiful landscape as it just dropped away. Our group was definitely in beast mode that day and we made it to the top of the second section with time to spare. Evan rewarded us by taking us over and letting us do a monkey bridge that is actually part of the Skyline Traverse route. It was much higher and trickier than the first one we'd done, but it was awesome.
one more short but steep climb later and we reach the top just in time to watch the tram zoom right over the top of our heads. We were still riding high on adrenaline when we decided that it was time to head back down the hill. But the hard work wasn't over just yet. There was one more little hill that we had to hike up on our way back. Just enough to get you breathing heavy and sweating a little bit. But it didn't seem to break anyone's spirit as it was all laughter and smiles all the way down and celebrating what we had just done. Of course, it didn't hurt that we had a view like this to distract us from how tired we were either. At this point, we could see the beast on the road down below, so victory was in sight. We were definitely ready to get down off the mountain and get ourselves a cold drink. The temperature was just starting to rise to a point where it was getting a little bit uncomfortable up there. We'd love to give a huge shout out to our guides Evan, Wit, Sam, and the rest of the team at Alpenglow for such a fun and epic experience. We can't wait to come back and climb with you guys again. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to check us out on Instagram at livethatadventurelife.com. And for more adventures, check us out on our website at thatadventurelife.com. Hey.